Hello! Today we're introducing equations. Equations are tools that find answers and predict the future and predict the past. They're incredibly useful, wonderful tools. You're not going to learn how to use them today. You're not even going to learn how to solve them today, but you are going to learn the basics. So what are the basics? Well, what are they? What is an answer? What is a solution? And how can you tell if something is a solution? Those are the things we're covering today. All right? Excellent. Let's begin. First, a definition. Equations are two expressions which are set equal to each other. They might be true, they might be untrue, or they might be open, which means we don't know if they're true or not. So here's some examples. Now, 8 plus 4 is an expression, and 12 is an expression. Is 8 plus 4 equal to 12? Yes. So therefore, this is a true expression. Now, here's a second one. 1 half is an expression, and 1 and 2 tenths is an expression. Is 1 half equal to 1 and 2 tenths? No. This is an untrue expression. All right, 3x is an expression, and 36 is an expression. Are they equal to each other? We have no idea. Might they be equal to each other? Yes, but might they also not be? Yes, if x was equal to 12, they would be equal to each other, because 3 times 12 is 36. If x is equal to 10, 3 times 10 is 30, not equal to 36. We don't know whether this is true or not. That is why this is called an open equation. Okay, so you have the basics. Equations are two expressions set equal to each other. They might be true, they might be untrue, or we might not be able to tell, in which case they're called an open equation. Okay, before we get on to some more learning, here's a trick question. This is one of my favorite trick questions in the world. Ready? What is the answer to this equation? 3x equals 12. So you think to yourself, okay, 3 times x equals 12. 3 times, okay, equals 12. What's the answer? What's the answer? Did you get 4? Well, ha, 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 that's the trick. It's not 4. The answer is 12. It says so right there. What does 3x equal? 3x equals 12. And even 4? Four? 4 is not even the solution. The solution is x equals 4. A solution has to be more than just a value. You have to say what, what is the, e, the variable that that value equals. That's how you state a solution. So do you understand the difference between an answer and a solution? They are different things. The answer to this is 12. What does 3x equal? It equals 12. That answers the question. 4 is not a solution, but the solution x equals 4 is a solution because 3 times 4 is 12. All right, so that's what a solution is. Here's the definition. Solution. The statement of a value for a variable that makes the equation true. So remember how equations come in three different varieties? They come in true, untrue, or open. Well, when it's an open equation, if you find a value, a, a value for the variable that makes, that makes it true, then that becomes a true equation rather than an open equation. And the, the statement of that solution is the solution. So you would say A equals 7, B equals negative 2.5, things like that. Okay. So what are the solutions to these equations? Now it says talk them over with your partner. I know you have no partner except for a couple of you. But think it over. Try to come up with the solutions. Pause your record, your playback if you need time.
All right, let's test them, all right? Now, normally, I would ask students, and they would give me solutions, and then I would test them. But I don't have students in front of me right now, so I have to just make up stuff. All right, well, 8 times 24 is 160 plus 32 is 192. Therefore, I think that A equals 192. Well, let's test it. I'll put 192 in for A. This is just the substitution step, just like we were doing with, with expressions. 8 times 192 is 800, plus 720 is 1520, plus 16 is 1636. 1636, is that equal to 24? No. So A does not equal 192. Well, what does A equal? Well, let me see. Let's try A equals 3. Is that the solution? Well, let me put a 3 in here. What is 8 times 3? 8 times 3 is 24. Does 24 equal 24? Yes. A equals 3 is the solution. Let's try the next one. What plus 3 is 24? Well, I think it's 27. So B equals 27. Let me put a 27 in here. 27 plus 3 is 30, and 30 equals 24. Hey, 30 doesn't equal 24, does it? So B equals 27 is wrong. In fact, if I'm going to add 3 to something, don't I need it to be smaller in order to get up to 24? <coughs> So what's 3 smaller than 24? Well, b equals 21. Let's see if that's right. Here's 21. 21 plus 3 is 24. Does 24 equal 24? It does. So b equals 21 is the solution to that equation. All right, let's try this. 18 minus c equals 30. Well, I bet it's 12, because between 18 and 30 is 12. So I'll put 12 in here. Okay, so I'm saying C equals 12. Let's see if that's right. Well, 18 minus 12, that's 6, and 6 equals 30. Oops, it can't be 12, can it? There is a difference of 12 here, but remember that this is, that this is minus 12 or minus whatever this number is. What type of a number do I have to subtract in order to go up? If I subtract a positive number, it's gonna go down. What type of a number makes things go up when you subtract? A negative number. Let's try C equals negative 12. So, this is 18, and this is positive 12, and they make 30, and 30 equals 30, C equals negative 12 is the right solution. Here, try this one. All right, I think it's 24 because we're dividing by 2 and 48 divided by 2 is 24. D equals 24. Have you gotten the idea yet that I'm deliberately getting these wrong? Well, yeah, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? But we're still going to do it. So let's try this. 24 goes where D was. D was up here. I'm going to put the 24 there. 24 divided by 2 is 12, and 48 does not equal 12, does it? So D equals 24 is wrong. Well, think about it. I'm dividing a number by 2, and it has to come out equal to 24. So what sort of a number can I use? Well, how about... 96. Let's try D equals 96. I'll put a 96 in there. And now 48 equals 96 divided by 2. Well, 2 goes into 9 twice with 1 left over. And 2 goes into 16. Oh, 2 doesn't go into 9 twice. 2 goes into 9 4 times with 1 left over because 2 times 4 is 8. 1 left over makes 16. 2 goes into 16 2 goes into 16 8 times and 48. So does 48 equal 48? 
Yes, it does. D equals 96 is the solution to that equation. So, are you beginning to get the idea of what a solution is? Again, I'm not teaching you how to solve it. Not yet. That's going to be next week. Okay, so here's how to check to see if something is a solution. First, substitute the value for the variable. Evaluate both sides of the equation. See if the two sides are equal in value. If they are equal, it's a solution. If they're not equal, it is not a solution. So, here's the question. Is g equal to 6 a solution for 4g minus 7? So, some of you might think that since g is 6, this turns into 46. You know better than that. This is 4 times g. So, this turns into 4, oops, undo, undo, 4 times 6 minus 7 equals 17. Let's see if that works. 4 times 6 is 24 minus 7 equals 17. 24 minus 7 is 17. Does 17 equal 17? Yes. Therefore, g equals 6 is a solution, so I will circle yes. And this is how you show your work. You show the substitution step. Then you have show your evaluation and you show the details of the evaluation until you get down to one number equaling the same number. If they come out the same, you circle yes. If they come out differently, you circle no. Here is another example. Same steps. Substitute the value for the variable. In this case, h equals negative 2, 3h plus 20 equals negative 7h. Hey, there's two h's there. What am I going to do? Well, what is h equal to? Negative 2. It is equal to negative 2 every single time h happens in the equation. So it's going to substitute every single time. So this turns into 3 times negative 2 plus 20 equals negative 7 times negative 2. All right, let's see if this works. Oops, I did that. That looks like 21. I just had to make it look like a parenthesis. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, so that turns into negative 6 plus 20. Negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. Negative 6 plus 20, they go in opposite directions, so that means I'm going to take 6 off of 20, and 6 off of 20 makes 14. Does 14 equal 14? Yes. Therefore, h equals negative 2 is a solution, and you'll circle Yes. Okay, here's another example. So this time is i equal 4, a solution for 2i plus 5 equals negative 5i plus 7. So remember, we're going to substitute 4 for i every single time. So it's 2 times 4 plus 5 equals negative 5 times 4 plus 7. So we substituted the variable with the value. Now we're going to evaluate both sides of the equation. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 5, and negative 5 times 4 is negative 20 plus 7. And now I'm going to do 8 plus 5 is 13, and negative 20 plus 7, they go in opposite directions. There's more negatives. 20 take away 7 is 13, but since there's more negatives, it's negative 13. Now, see if the two sides are equal in value. Is 13 equal to negative 13? No, it is not equal. They are opposites. So, if they are not equal, it is not a solution, and we circle the word no. And that's how you check to see if it is a solution or not. You have to understand how to do the substitution step, how to evaluate both sides and show all of your steps in evaluating, and you have to show if you have to show the two sides and you have to see if they are equal or not equal. 
If they are equal, like in this case, where 14 equals 14, you circle yes. If they're not equal, like 13 equals negative 13, you circle no. Okay? Make sure you show all the steps. All right. Do you understand how to? Check if a solution to an equation is correct. That's this whole process. This process right here. That four-step process. Excellent. So, good job. You should now be ready to embark on your equation experiences.